And today uh, we're going to talk about four steps of childhood and the first step is prenatal or fetal period and also it uh, first two, three months after birth. Uh, some psychologists, they do not accept the idea that there is um, psychology <laughs> Uh, about the fetal um, period and they especially doctors they do not believe that uh, you know the period when baby is inside the mommy is affect somehow um, the adult's life but um, I would like to tell you about this theory and I think personally that um, this does affect our life and if you don't believe in it, then um, consider just first, maybe first or second or third months of the birth. And if you have children, this is going to help you to understand them better. And if you don't have children, um, you can try to remember stories that you've heard uh, about uh, pregnancy uh, when, mom, when your mom was pregnant with you. And um, those stories uh, will help you understand your character, your belief system and um, why, for example, why uh, you might be in a constant stress or have so many anxiet anxieties in your life. Okay, so uh, the basic child needs of this period is I am the center of the universe. All my needs are fulfilled instantly and everything and everyone in this world is a part of me and work for me. And this is normal. The child feels that he is a god. Any abnormalities, uh, stress, health issues during pregnancy and or right uh, for during the first month uh, after the birth and such as um, when the the fetus did not receive enough food or enough vitamins or maybe birth trauma or any difficulties during the birth, the child can form the belief that the world is a dangerous place. I cannot trust the world. I cannot trust anyone. At the deep level, the child experiences the feeling of deficiency. And the child might control a mechanism which means Mm, the desire to compete, to fight with other people, to be higher, better than everybody else. So in order to achieve anything in life, this person will fight, will compete, will be angry, will be violent and um, will be selfish. And this is going to happen. This is happening because during the birth, he had a trauma and he created the belief that this world is a dangerous place. I should not and I cannot trust anyone. Uh, every child goes through this narcissistic period and this period is necessary for healthy self-esteem. A child should feel himself as a center of the universe and this is going to help him to create the feelings, yes, I can, I deserve uh, good things, I am capable and this will help him to create a good health esteem and self-confidence. But if the child went through trauma during this period, um, then in a worst case scenario, we're going to have a narcissistic, selfish person who cannot trust anyone and who feel superior above all. And trauma during uh, a narcissistic period uh, in adulthood might reflect as um, um, a dependence on other people. What other will say about me? Uh, the desire to become one uh, with another person. Dependent relationship. Uh, a person who wants to have a friend who feels, uh, thinks uh, and does the same as he. Or a woman who believes or want to have a husband uh, who will predict her desires, who will um, be a psychic and not understand her mood. Uh, we might have a person who will have constant struggles for resources, a person who will use manipulation uh, and lies to get what he wants. Um, 
we might have a person who has feelings of superiority over others and um, the person will think that he has to have a better car, better house, better phone, better husband, better friends, better job and the person will show off in order to show you know everybody and uh, himself first that he is better than other. He believes that he is better than other and that's why he has to have the best of the best. We might have a, a person with a narcissistic trauma um, might uh, criticize uh, a lot other people and uh, other people work and it might happen in real life so the person can actually say those words or he might think it in his head. So it's constant comparison of um, himself with others. And when a narcissist can't get what he want, uh, he either devalue it or he feel his feelings of superiority changes to a feelings of insignificance. The feelings that nobody understands me, I am nothing, uh, the, the desire to hide, and then it's going to change quickly to the feelings that I am better than everybody else. Because a narcissistic person cannot feel shame, he cannot be in feelings that I am worse, I am nothing, he cannot be in those feelings for a long time. So he will change back to the selfish, um, rude, uh, um, manipulative person quickly. And again, he will put himself above everybody else. And the narcissist often lives uh, in anxiety, fears, uh, because he or she has to analyze every situation, every small conversation. And a narcissistic is a person who always think what uh, he should say in return, how he can um, answer in this situation uh, or what he was supposed to answer. So this person lives in constant anxiety and uh, this anxiety becomes kind of normal for him. And during uh, the uh, online training, eight weeks of uh, healing the inner child, uh, the first week uh, we're going to talk about the paradise, return to paradise, return to the feelings of paradise. And we're going to do this because the uh, narcissistic period is extremely important. And everybody went through this period. And everybody um, time to time wants to be superior, right? Everybody uh, feels that people cannot understand him. And narcissistic trauma can be deep or can be shallow. But uh, we're going to work on this trauma. And we're going to do uh, an exercise that called the divine child and it's going to help us to learn and connect with the, uh, our inner child we're going to learn how to hear our true desires then we're going to do an exercise that's, that that uh, is called a magical lake and the symbol of a lake uh, the round lake is a symbol of a mother womb and um, we will return to the feelings of paradise. We're going to fulfill our inner child with love. We're going to give him sense of security, freedom and happiness. So he is not going to struggle anymore. He's not going to suffer anymore. And uh, he is not going to make us um, fight with other people, fight with the world. And then we're going to do an exercise uh, turtle. Uh, in order to learn how to relax, how to relieve the anxiety, relieve our stress, and how to feel protected by a strong turtle shell and find the secure place within. The next slide is about rage, narcissistic rage. A narcissistic rage is the uncontrollable and unexpected anger. Rage comes in many forms, but all uh, pertain to the same thing, revenge. Because narcissistic person thinks that the world and other people is attacking him, he wants to revenge. Uh, narcissistic rage are based on the fear that he is under attack. 
and this is the fear of death. And narcissistic rage is so sudden, so quick, and so big that uh, he uh, it will endure even after the threat is gone. Uh, the root uh, of narcissistic rage is uh, hidden in, of course, in the childhood when uh, an infant needed. Uh, something and his needs were not satisfied. He did not get enough food, did not get enough sleep. Uh, then um, for the infant, it's like death. So I don't have enough food, I'm gonna die. I don't, uh, I did not sleep enough, I'm gonna die. Any infant um, have does not understand that the world is a separate part. He uh, sees it as a part of him. So for him as like uh, one part of me is attacking another part of me. And the fear of death is so big and is so deep that it leads to uncontrollable rage. And an infant has no sense of boundaries. Everything external is a continuation of me. My mother is a continuation of me. When a mother cannot satisfy fetus or infant's desires, for him it's like, again, one part of him is attacking another part of him. And this rage can be provoked by small things. Uh, a person uh, begins to yell or break things or physically he might beat another person or abuse an animal. And for example, children might be violent at school, they might bite other kids, they might leave bruises, and um, uh, during another time they might be sweet, polite, and good manner, and have a good manners. And it's very hard to believe how this child could be so violent. And um, often uh, a person might control himself in public, but at home he becomes a monster. And I would like to recommend you to watch um, the first uh, season of Big Little Lies. Uh, this is a seven ep uh, episodes uh, series. And pay attention to Nicole Kidman husband. He, his rage is always sudden, always based on small things that normal person might not even notice. And um, you can also see how this algorithm, how this pattern reflects the whole family. Uh, another example, uh, when a person controls him almost in every situation, but when he drinks alcohol, he becomes violent. Uh, he might have a desire to rape or abuse another person. Um, he starts fight without the reason and the the, uh, the scary part is that he cannot be stopped, nobody can stop him and he cannot stop himself until he releases his rage. Again, uh, the movie Big Little Lies, uh, there are only seven episodes, but you can see this algorithm. And if this is somehow related to you, if you are in an abusive relationship, or maybe you know someone who is in an abusive relationship, this movie is going to be a deal breaker. You, you, after watching this movie, you might uh, understand that uh, your relationship is not just, um, is not just, you, you you might realize that it's not just a problem, not just a regular problem, but this is a serious problem and you have to do something about it. Uh, another example of a narcissistic rage is angry driver. Um, I'm talking about drivers who can scream, who can create a fight, who can race another person if somebody uh, cut him off. And this is also a fear of death. So beneath it's the fear of death. The fear is uh, so sudden, so deep and unnoticeable. So the driver becomes angry with milliseconds and he can uh, jump out of his car, he can break window, he can hit another person, another driver, and he can become violent like in, in milliseconds. And the deepest child's fear is the fear of death. 
and this is the fear of being swallowed being crushed being strung strangled and being rejected by the mother those fears formed during the fetal period inside the mother womb the fetus is afraid that mother is gonna swallow him crush him reject him and especially this fear uh, is um, formed during the birth process because he actually mother has to push him in order for child to be born and during the birth process uh every one of us experienced that fear unless you were like c-section right and um in psychology you know there is a big argument about the c-section some people believe that uh, this is um uh, very good specifically from the medical point of view and a lot of psychologists believe uh, that this will create a deep trauma later in adult's life uh, anyway today we're gonna we're not gonna talk about that part i just want to tell you that during the birth we all experienced a fear of death and uh, from one side uh, this is the fear of death and from another side this is the desire to survive to live and it is not possible for uh, a child for an infant for a baby to escape death since uh, everything external is continuation of me this is how the baby thinks i cannot escape from myself the death is also part of me and um, an infant wants to dissolve want to feel nothing and as a result an infant might block his feelings and emotions so if the child experienced a deep um, birth trauma then he will become a narcissistic person who is gonna block his feelings his emotions and he is not gonna be able to feel sympathy he will not be able to um, give love uh, and receive love because he is not capable of it he blocked his feelings he blocked his emotions during his birth and the first few months of his life and narcissistic people are people who know about feelings and emotions in theory but they cannot feel it in reality uh, for example, if you never tried lemon, you might know that it's sour, but you cannot imagine the taste until you eat it before. So uh, you might know that it's sour and the people make like weird um, faces when they eat lemon. And you can kind of even um, show this emotion on your face, but you, you cannot uh, sympathize, you cannot truly understand what it means to eat lemon this is the same with a narcissistic person on the second week of our training eight weeks of healing the inner child we're gonna talk about uh, birth as a miracle of life and i will offer you an amazing technique the meditation that's called uh, three wishes by the goldfish and the three wishes are uh, to be protected by the divine energy, to be loved, and to be happy. Then we're going to do an exercise, my divine parents, and you will have an opportunity, uh, you will go through feelings when your life is valued and when your life is important. And you're going to experience the divine parents' love, uh, who are happy, who feel joy because you were born. And you will receive the divine blessing um, to have a happy, successful life. And then we're going to do an exercise, uh, the divine egg. And uh, you will go through the reborn process. Uh, you can let yourself to reborn and to see the world as a great place to live. Um, let it be an abundance place where there's always someone who is gonna protect you.